John joins us in studio now to talk about the collection for the seminarians. In the Archdiocese of Boston on Pentecost Sunday, John, thanks you so much for being with us. You're welcome. Top Glad of the to morning to you, lad. And to you, Bishop. <laughs> so, you <laughs> know, you. Uh, Bishop teased it a little bit about uh, um, the seminary a little bit. Uh, tell us what a typical day is like over there. Well, a typical day is uh, we have morning prayer at 7.40 in the morning, and uh, then we have breakfast at 8, and then classes begin at uh, 8.40. And we usually have three sessions of classes, and then we have mass at 11.45, and then lunch directly afterwards. Um, then we usually have maybe three or four hours off where people can run errands, or they can do homework, or we play sports. And uh, then at uh, 5.15, we have evening prayer. Mm -hmm. And after 5.15, then we have dinner. Full day. A full day, yeah, yeah. yeah very and full I day. must say, I've been, yeah. been many times to the dining room. The food is quite good. The food is the best. Yeah, it really yeah, is. Yeah. yeah. I've put on about maybe 20 pounds ever since I got there about two years ago, so I have to watch <clears> my weight. <laughs> but it's not all about the food. You have a, a really interesting story. Could you just tell us a bit about how you discovered your vocation? And also, we're wondering about Monsignor Liam Bergen, because people know him from the TV mess. Yes. Uh, well, what happened is that about three years ago, my Uncle Joe uh, died. And uh, what happened is that I asked Father Liam Bergen if he would celebrate his funeral mass. And I've known Liam for a long time, um, and uh, Liam said yes, and so I did it, or he did it, and I actually delivered the eulogy, and uh, Liam gave me a good compliment afterwards, telling me that it was a pretty good eulogy, maybe one of the best he ever heard. And uh, then three months later, um, in the summertime, I happened to go to St. Bridget's Church, where Liam is based, and I went there for a six o'clock Sunday evening mass, and I just waited till everybody else was gone, just to say hi to Liam. And, uh, and Liam uh, just said to me, John, you should be in the seminary. And he's very direct with me. And uh, so I, I, I said to myself, my God, this, is, uh, this must be the Holy Spirit who's mm. talking to me. Uh, because Liam has known me for six years, and he never even mentioned a priesthood to me. Uh, but now I guess in light of what happened with my, with my Uncle Joe's funeral, he might have seen something in me. And so I took it very seriously. But then it wasn't until about maybe six or seven months later that I went back home to Ireland uh, for a friend's ordination to the priesthood. And it was in the midst of his first Mass, actually, that I got the heartfelt uh, calling to the priesthood. Wow. And that kind of confirmed uh, what, what, Liam was, um, what Liam was saying to me. What a great story. And you were an engineer, yeah. right? I used to work as an engineer for a long time, about 15 years, and I loved it. Um, and then what happened was that um, I, I got laid off about 10 years ago and then went back to college, got my MDiv, and became a chaplain for about two years. Well, you're going to be an engineer of souls Absolutely. in a couple of years. <laughs> Absolutely, And yes. the, co the collection on Pentecost is to support our seminaries, right? How important is that? For That's really, prisoners? really important. Um, you know, it costs quite a bit of money to, to finance the formation of a seminary. Um, and so it's really important. Uh, we have maintenance costs. Uh, we don't pay any of the tuition whatsoever. It's all paid for. Uh, we have a lot of um, lay teachers as well and staff, and so they have to get paid a, a just salary as well. Mm -hmm. uh, there's there's so, so many different um, expenses that we have going on over there, so it's very important that they finance it. Yeah. And you know, it, I, I'm laughing, John, because people heard that I, I didn't recognize the brogue when you first came in here, yeah. and now I sit here talking to you, and they're probably saying, Did, was he even listening? Was he even? <laughs> because it, it's thick. Um, what about people? So it'll be at the parish where people can donate, right? Yeah. And what if they, what, how else can they donate? Well, you can go to the website of, of our seminary um, at Pope St. John. I think it's www.psjs.edu. And there's a link over there where you, where you can donate and, and give money. And I think the same with St. John's Seminary. They have a link on their website to donate. You were an engineer. What yes. Are, what are some of the other guys that you study with? Uh, what are some of their careers, some of their, their stories? Yeah, uh, we have guys actually who, um, who are lawyers, um, dentists, uh, doctors, um, teachers. Amazing. Wonderful guys, actually. It's, uh, Paul St. John's is a very unique uh, seminary. And very they're from educated. all across the country, very well educated, yeah. and they're from different parts of the country as well. And we even have some guys from, one guy from Vietnam, uh, last year we had a guy from Puerto Rico and another guy from Kenya. 
so they're from all across the world as well. So but besides it's the good food, it must be a, a very interesting way community to live in. Yeah. It's 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 wonderful. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And like these guys, uh, you know, they're kind of late vocations, so they have a lot of life experience. You know, so it's really good to learn from them. And you also get a good idea of what the church is like in different parts of the world just from talking to them. So well, it's John, really wonderful. It's been a pleasure. Unfortunately, we're out of time because we have a million more questions. Make sure you tell Father Kylie that we send our best. Yes, absolutely. When you go back. I will. Good to have you with nice, us. Nice to be here with you as well.